You out there guys, this is Dale of Lone Wombat Airsoft and today we're just going to be discussing my favourite airsoft rifles out there. Uh, starting off with ones that I've owned previously and for one reason or another I've let go of and really regret doing so. Uh, going into some of the ones that I've got my eye on now that I really quite like the look of and will probably get in the future. And then going on to some conceptual things, like things that either don't exist yet in the airsoft world at all or kind of do but I wish was expanded upon a bit further. And so with that out of the way, let's crack on. The Silverback Bison. So let's start with one of the more out there guns I've ever owned, the Silverback Bison. Why did I love this gun? Well, aside from the fact that the completely stocked, it functioned fantastically and never made me feel like I needed to modify it internally to increase its power or range, the main reason was just that it was so different. I never once ran into someone at another site who was running one of these bad boys. If you want to stand out from the crowd of just another M4, this is how you do it. Now, like with all my previous guns, I had to sell this one on so I could afford a different one, which was how I used to cycle through my review guns. And I do feel it was a bit of a mistake, as I would love to still have my hands on this. That doesn't mean that this gun was perfect, though, and indeed its biggest drawback was its main feature, the cylindrical mags. You could only get these in mid-caps, which meant that you needed a few of them, and good luck trying to keep the spare mags that are this chunky on your body. Uh, there was more than a few people as well that would come up to me and say, nice grenade launcher, whilst pointing at the mag. And I was admittedly starting to get a little bit tired at the time of having to explain what the helical mag actually was to people. The Marusen Walther P99. My favourite handgun of all time was actually my first ever gas gun. Uh, this was something I liked the look of ever since I was a kid and I saw it in the Bond movies at the time, as to me it was the bigger and therefore better brother to the classic PPK. Whilst I actually got my hands on one, it fit into my hand perfectly, needed minimal maintenance, was hugely reliable and gas efficient, working even through the winter, a, a reduced performance admittedly, but it's more than any other gas gun I've owned could say, and could take extended mags, so you could blast away with this thing for ages and have a great time doing so. As for drawbacks, it may be the rose tinted glasses of distant memory talking, but I can't honestly remember having any. Selling this on was a major mistake for me, especially considering how the WE XDM that replaced it just paled in comparison. The Tokyo Marui P90 High Cycle. For me, this was the perfect backup weapon for my sniper rifle. I could be pinging away at distant targets with the JG Bar 10 I had at the time, and whenever someone got the bright idea to try and get within my sniper's minimum engagement range, imagine their surprise when I whipped out this monster of a gun and proceeded to hose them down at 30 rounds a second. When you opened up this thing, people would just stop and stare, the rate of fire wasn't that mad. Probably less impressive in this day and age when HPA units are everywhere, but it still doesn't stop this gun from being an absolute beast. Uh, the only drawback it had was a minor feeding problem with the mags, but more importantly mine came with a defective single fire, which would like to sometimes fire on fully auto, and that meant that I could never in good conscience take it to a CQB site. If I could get my hands on one of these with a working semi-auto, it would be the perfect gun for me. Especially since I grew up watching the Stargate series and my loadout straight up looks like an SG team already, so it fits right in. The King Arms Dragonov. In the early days, I went through many Dragonovs of different flavours. In fact, my first gun ever was an A&K Dragonov. Uh, I went on to own an Ares one with the folding stock, but this King Arms one was the pinnacle of the ones I owned. I always loved the form factor of them, it has a hugely distinctive look to it and was surprisingly lightweight for its size and had two things that almost no other spring sniper rifle has, a straight pull bolt and a high capacity mag. With me firing left handed and my right hand on the bolt itself, I could cycle the bolt on this so quickly it was practically a semi-auto DMR and being able to output a huge weight of fire from a sniper rifle was something that took a lot of people by surprise. I'm less certain I would want one now though, unless they made a more modernised and cut down length version, as I really need a standard scope to mount my camera gear onto, and the rifle was so long that half the time I, when I raised it to fire at someone, I'd find that the flash hider had collected a huge amount of dirt and leaves within itself, which was certainly less than helpful. So those are some of my previous guns that I've owned in the past and really regret selling on. I wish I had these to this day, uh, just because they were so fun or unique or interesting. I'd, Love those things. Hell, in the case of the high cycle, I may end up getting it again later down the line, just hoping to get one with a working semi-auto, because that would just be the perfect gun for me. But let's have a look at some of the ones that I haven't owned yet that I really like the look of and have definitely caught my eye for one reason or another.
The Tokyo Marie Scorpion Mod M. What to say about this thing that I can't convey better than just showing an image of it? I think my main love of this Pocket SMG is just how compact it is. I would consider this to be a perfect CQB weapon purely because it is no bigger than it needs to be. The rails and the threaded barrel mean you can customise the hell out of it, how it looks as well. The only thing that puts me off is the fact that it's an AEP with performance to match. 260 FPS is just a laughable figure, even for a CQB gun. Why they didn't make this into a gas blowback is beyond me, as that would have made it even more appealing, especially with the fact that it's compatible with the standard Scorpion drum magazines. But as a dedicated backup weapon, this still is something that I just can't take my eyes off of. The Tokyo Marie SGR-12 when Tokyo Marie first released the AA-12 electric fully automatic shotgun, I loved the idea of it, but I didn't much care for how featureless and boring the exterior of the AA-12 was. If only they'd made it more modern looking and had some rails attached to it, I thought. And then, not long after that, came this chonky boy. Like, it's as if the designers took the adage of there's no kill like overkill as a challenge when they designed this system as fully automatic three round shotgun fire coming from a 3000 round drum mag is just going to shred through bushes like it was nothing. Whilst I love the concept I still can't personally justify the price tag of this gun and I'm pretty certain that I'd feel bad about opening up on people with it. I'm just waiting for another manufacturer to copy and adapt the three shot electric auto system into something else, however, maybe an AK style Saiga 12 as a thought? The SRU GHK G5 Bullpup. Now, admittedly, this one is cheating a little bit as SRU don't actually make the gun that goes into this, that goes to GHK, but to me, they created something hugely impressive here. I tend to like all the 3D printed kits they come out with, especially ones for the Tokimori Mark 23 and the M93 Rafika, but this is just one of the less over the top designs and I think it gives the overall package a much cleaner and plausible look to it. Anyone that's watched my content for a while will know that I have a bit of an affinity for bullpups or guns that don't overcompensate and are no larger than they need to be, and by converting existing platforms into bullpup versions, SRU have managed to breathe new life into them, even producing a kit that makes me even like the idea of what they could do to an M4. I would love to get my hands on one of these kits, whilst realistically I'll probably end up getting the Mark 23 sniper conversion at some point as that fits my playstyle more, this is still my favourite looking kit that they produce. The Cyma M052 Grenade Launcher Usually, whilst I love the concept of grenade launchers, they tend to be too bulky or expensive for what they are for my tastes. Not with this one. Again, I love this because it knows exactly what it's supposed to do and does nothing more than that. It's just a tube with a firing pin after all. And is therefore, it's priced a lot more reasonably and makes the idea of getting a launcher so much more appealing to me. The idea of being able to just whip this out and make someone disappear in a cloud of gas of 200 BBs or so is just hilarious. And if the site allows tank, explosive or smoke rounds, it might even actually be useful during a game. So that's a look at some of the guns I've owned previously or want to buy in the future that are my absolute favourite picks of all time. Uh, but these are ones that exist in the world. What about ones that don't? Um, one thing that's been on my mind for a couple of years now, especially after watching like SHOT Show coverage, is just seeing the manufacturers wheel out M4 after M4. Oh, it's not an M4, it's got a brand new front end on it. Wow! Um, it's really made me want something completely out there and different from airsoft manufacturers. Like, just to get something, just throw the rule book out, get something in that is so completely radically different that people can't help but take notice of it. So, here's a couple of ideas I have for things like that that might pique your interest. Two in one guns. Now, this is a concept that we can kind of reach now, as you can get under barrel mounted master key shotguns or grenade launchers, even little mini launchers for pistols even. But it's something I'd like to see expanded further. Moving away from actual real world weapons, make an airsoft gun that is a single package that has two barrels in an over under configuration, one of which is a spring powered bolt action 500 FPS sniper and the other is a 350 FPS AEG. You could have the main trigger fire the bolt action and have an integrated foregrip with another trigger that fires the AEG. AEG mag and M4 Stanag sort of thing could go in between them, and maybe you could side feed a VSR 10 mag into the top. This way you wouldn't need to carry two guns into a game if you need a backup weapon as a sniper. You would have your backup gun ready to go at all times. 
you wouldn't even need to be just limited to bolt action and AEG. You could have any combination of AEG, DRM, bolt action, blowback or non-blowback gas, pump shotguns. The possibilities would be endless. Yes, it would not be realistic in the slightest, but from a gameplay perspective, something like this could be huge. Fictional weaponry. Yes, we do have versions of these out there, such as the Aliens Pulse Rifle, the Halo Assault Rifle, the Ghost in the Cell Schrodinger, but a lot of these tend to be overpriced for what they are, especially that Schrodinger. Um, but what I'd really like to see are just more of these. There are some really cool fictional weaponry out there, and the potential to bring them into the airsoft world is already there. We just need a manufacturer to take on the license and make them. Gears of War Lancers, an Apex Legends Bangalore-style shoulder-mounted launcher, Things like that would be really cool, but there is one thing that I would really like to see above all others. What's less known about me is I'm very much into Warhammer 40k, Kill Team specifically, but what I think would make an awesome fictional weapon would be the classic bolt gun. Imagine, if you will, a semi-automatic, mag-fed grenade launcher that either fires spread pack and shotgun shells, or even better, the explodes on impact tag rounds. Is it an insane idea that will probably never happen? Yes. Would I want it to happen anyway and would empty my bank account if it did? Oh yes. Modern reimagining of classics. I've seen a couple of these floating around, such as the Tokimori Scorpion Mod M I've already talked about in this video. The M14 EBR is a good example. And SRU makes the 3D printed kits that can breathe new life into old guns, such as the classic broom handle. And this is a concept I would love to see more of. Yes, they may not exist in the real world, but I would love to get my hands on a modern, revised bullpup FNFAL, for example. I think that it's long past due that the airsoft world as a whole lets go of the idea that these must be replicas of existing firearms. We've done that for ages now, and they'll still be here. Those guns aren't going anywhere. So let's have some fun and take some creative license with what's come before. So, thanks for sticking through to the end of a video of what is essentially me just gushing about the various airsoft guns I like the look of and would like to see. Um, as it is looking, unfortunately, like the majority of us are going to have to be staying at home for the foreseeable future, I'm going to have to think up of some ideas of different kinds of airsoft videos to do, and discussion kind of content is something that's on my mind recently. But if there is anything you'd like me to talk about in the airsoft world, or show you the kit I've got, for example, Leave it in the comment section down below and I'll have a look at it and we'll try and get some content produced for us all. And until next time then, this has been Dale of Lone Wombat Airsoft.